Let's talk about the cybersphere. The cybersphere has two distinct, at the moment, two sorts of attributes. The cybersphere, on the one hand, is made up of cyberspace, and on the other hand, is conceptually made up. I mean, we anticipate that it will be made up of all those uh, enterprises in artificial life, post biological systems. So these two elements make up what we might want to call the cybersphere. At the moment, we are very much engaged in virtual reality, very much engaged with cyberspace, very much engaged in the implications of that for telepresence. Bearing in mind that telepresence it can be at the simple level of, uh, uh, of a kind of extension of one's powers into another domain uh, in the sense of um, telerobotics and so on um, is, a, is a valuable but a banal area for uh, this discussion. It's a very important area in, in, other, in other discussion. For this one, that's not so interesting. What is interesting is that in processes of telepresence, where the self is distributed, of course that works two ways. The self can receive other selves in its distributed states. It's very important because cyberspace means interactivity in virtual reality. So in this cyberspace, in telepresence, we're distributed, but in that process, in this context, which I think is interesting, is that we can transform the self in that process of telepresence. It's not a simple, it's not like, I mean, I think the popular idea of telepresence is like beaming out like a TV image of oneself on a monitor somewhere. We're not talking about that. We're talking about distributing the self, but with the possibilities of transformation of self according to the context within which that distributed self, that telepresence, finds itself. Now that raises many, many questions about how in telepresence one would recognize the context that one was in. And we are developing all kinds of technology, uh, as, as is known, both in outer space and, and deep inside you know, the level of microbes, to understand how we can recognize what the context is. But in that in that scenario of the cybersphere, on the one hand, uh, molecular uh, engineering and development and emergence of new forms, of new identities on the one hand, and on the other, of cyberspace, that is of a telepresence of the individual presence, which can also transform attributes of that presence, of that individual identity in the process of telepresence, the question of death almost becomes bypassed. Almost becomes bypassed because the physical, the biomass of the body is of infinitely less significance to everything which we would say was important in the definition of being a human being. That is, the human being's presence in the presence of others because that presence becomes distributed. Secondly, the gross um, finality of form, which one finds in so-called natural genetic, genetically determined structures, the biomass as it gets formed, um, that uh, proposition as being the final definition of a human being no longer holds. There is another definition in which the human being can transform herself both genetically and that is down the road yet, of course, but is implicitly there. But at the moment, certainly in terms of the telepresence. Now, in that transformation and in that distribution, there is also continuation in time. Once you put data, if we're going to re reduce it to what is the elementary particles of cyberspace, is, is data, is, is, uh, is, is digital data. Once you distribute data, it can go on circulating as it were, indefinitely, as long as there's a context around which or within which it can reform. So here is immortality. Here is immortality. And it bypasses entirely this question of death. There are consequences of that for our culture because you can well see those cultures in which death is a sort of dominating, overarching final concept against which other things are set up, religions, rituals, um, and so forth. But if you remove death from the agenda in that sense, as, a, as this dominating concept, 
what are the human rituals? What are the new human, uh, common, shared activities or structures that we will build? Well, that's the question. That's what we are beginning to find now. That's what we're beginning to do. And the way we're starting to deal with that, um, it may not be the best way, but it's what we're doing, is to actually deconstruct the institutions of learning, of religion, of culture, which have existed in preparation for reconstructing new kinds of, well, new kinds of structures, I won't call them institutions. <laughs>